Good evening. We have about one minute before we start our call. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, I'm Robert Schuler, and I want to welcome you to The Call, and it is part of our Robert Schuler Ministries, a church with no walls. We love the 15th of the month because of this, and uh, that happens to be today. If it's 6 p.m. and it's the 15th, what time is it? It's time for The Call. <laughs> and no matter where we are, we, uh, we're here on The Call. By hook or by crook or by any, any uh, means possible, we we will get to a phone line so we can do this because we absolutely love this. And now we're with Facebook Live. So hi, everybody on Facebook Live. Hi there. And um, so if you wish to watch this instead of listen to it, we have a couple options now. I know. Yeah. That's great. So it it's, it's pretty better. cool. So this is a time for us to read the Bible, to pray. It's a time for us to talk about the impact our faith has on our lives. And uh, Don and I are here to give you this mid-month encouragement and remind you that if you continue to surrender your life to God and trust the outcome of any situation to Him, you'll experience God's perfect and His beautiful will for your life. Sure will. And this is Donna Schuler. Uh, thanks again for joining Robert and I on this call, which is a telephone gathering. And I think we all know when this is by now, but we have to keep saying this because this goes on our podcast. So we want people that pick this up while they're writing to work tomorrow morning or next week or next month or next year, whenever that could be. That's the way technology is now. We want them to know this is live on the 15th of every month at uh, 6 p.m. <laughs> The Pacific time. Um, we've been doing this for a long time now, four and a half years. And no matter we are where we are in the world, we do this call. Uh, we're also broadcasting on Facebook Live right now, and it's been really great. Hasn't it been great, Robert? It, <laughs> yeah, really. Yes. We've done. Is this our third third month? I don't. I yeah, think I think it, it is. is our third our month third using month Facebook, Facebook Live. Uh -huh. And remember, uh, towards the end of the call here, we will take uh, questions. And all you have to do to get in the queue is to push star six on your telephone. And if you're on Facebook Live and want to get on the telephone call, then all you do is you dial 641-715-3865. And then they'll ask for an access code. And you have to punch in 642 Eight four eight and the pound side. So that's if you'd like to give ask the number one more time, Donna. It's six four one seven one five three eight six five. That's exactly. Oh, he's writing it down. He's going to put it up there. Yeah. So in case you want to call in, but we don't need to do that right now because we've got lots to accomplish before we introduce our amazing guest. Um, who will also be available to answer your question. Okay, you've got that up there. That's great. And I'm told, well, we tested it. It's not backwards as it has been because we turned the camera around. So that should be great. Um, but, I like but the problem with us turning the camera around is if people ask us questions or have yeah. comments, we can't say hi to our friends who, on are, Facebook who Live. are on Facebook no. Live because otherwise, otherwise it's everything we put up here like this. Is backwards. Which is our phone number <laughs> if you want to talk to us is backwards. And all these books. Are, so are, if you have any questions, uh, if you want comments to make, you can make that on Facebook and when we and when it's on our um, when, you uh, when post, it's posted, post it, it'll it. be seen. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, and it'll be seen by people on Facebook now. Right. But we won't see it until uh, exactly. We won't see it now, exactly. So. 
<laughs> um, so I want to start out. This is a we would like to call this, you know, it's part of our church with no walls. And I want to start out by having a prayer because because this that's is a, what part of a church do. service. So that's <laughs> what we do. So uh, please, um, if you're driving, please don't close your eyes. But you know, God doesn't care if you open your eyes, close your no. eyes. It's just please join that's us the heart as that we matters. pray. Exactly, um, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for this opportunity to, um, with new technology, which newer technology is, is just such an amazing way to reach the world with your love, Lord. And tonight we have a very special guest on. Uh, he truly has an amazing, um, amazing work to share with us, an amazing testimony himself. And Lord, I just thank you for, for him. And we'll be introducing him a little bit later, God, and, and you know his heart, and he's got a great heart, he and his wife both. And we thank you that they've dedicated their lives to serving you. Lord, may each and every person listening tonight just be blessed in miraculous ways. May they somehow learn that they can also turn their hurts and their failures, their, their post-traumatic stress into growth, into beautiful people of resilience, people that we know that you want more of on this earth in these very, sometimes very troubling times, Lord. We thank you for being our strength, our shield, our comforter, our healer, God. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. <laughs> well, we ha our guest tonight, I'm going to just mention his name is actually, well, I'm not going to mention his name. I'm just going to tell you, <laughs> he, he is a, a general in the U.S. Army, or, or retired, I should say. So he was a general in the U.S. Army. Well, we'll have to ask him if once a general, always a general. I think you are. Pretty sure. Yes. Yeah. You just have, but I know every time he's introduced himself or talks to me, he's always said right. retired. Well, on his book right here. And on his general, book, it U.S. Says, Army. Retired. Comma, retired. So anyway, I, I don't know whether, <laughs> but anyhow, that's, let, let me put it this way. That I consider this, in effect, this the soldier's psalm. Um, it's been recognized as that. Mm. Uh, I gave this psalm to a friend of mine who was going through some very difficult times. He was, he was having panic attacks. It was so difficult mm. for him. And this is a very successful man. You know who I'm talking about, mm -hmm. Donna. And I said, this is your Bible verse for you. And uh, he just clung to this. this and, it, uh, and it saved his life. It really did. So let me read it to you. It's Psalm 27. And this is what it says. The Lord is the light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle. He will set me high upon a rock. <laughs> then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice. When I call, O oh Lord, be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says to you, seek his face. My face, your face, Lord, will I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O oh God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O oh Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of your oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. 
take heart and wait for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Psalm 27. Great words for us. And uh, great words of resilience. Absolutely. Uh, before we, we uh, introduce our guest, our very special guest, our honored guest, uh, I want to give you a little bit of a ministry update from us. Uh, not a lot has changed since our ministry update last month, but again, we have different people listening to this all the time. So uh, one exciting thing, Robert is going to be in Washington, D.C. twice in July. I'll be with him uh, the first time. Uh, one of the things he'll be doing is... You're going to come with me the second time, not the first time. Oh, okay. <laughs> one, of, one of the times, I should say. Yeah. Um, he will be meeting with and sharing the podium with missionary Kenneth Bay, who was the longest held captive in North Korea. Uh, he was in captive captivity for two years. Uh, he has an amazing testimony. And Robert will be Robert and Kenneth Bay will be part of a conference being sponsored by the Global Peace Foundation, which we have worked very closely with since its inception, uh, going on nine years ago now. And this is the Committee for the Reunification of South and North Korea, which is a very um, important issue. Uh, it's something all of us should be extremely concerned about as far as uh, Asia goes and the stability in that region. And so we have been very involved with this Global Peace Foundation. And Robert will be, that's one of the things he's doing in Washington, D.C. when he goes there, uh, I believe, the 17th. That's the trip I won't be going on, the first trip. Yeah, the conference starts on the 18th. Exactly. That's right. Okay. So um, another thing, very important thing, is we are um, obviously going to remind you again about robertshulerinspiration.com. That's our new website that is up and running. But if you when, once you sign up, you'll get a thank you and a confirmation. But please do sign up for these inspirational video series. Just to um, clarify, some people have been a little confused. They either thought it was part of the call or even more so they thought it was part of the Sunday morning messages Robert's been doing now at 8 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time every Sunday morning on Facebook Live. It has everything to do with that but nothing to do with it. This is actually a video series that we're working on. Robert specifically is working really hard on and it has to do with, well, you know, it's basically a place where people can get on ongoing help and inspiration for things like well basically dealing with any kind of grief loss lack of faith and the daily struggles that we all face in life uh, some of those might be divorce family problems loss of a job loss of income diagnosis of an illness or a disease caring for older parents that's a big one for people in our generation right now for roberts in my age i know a lot of people that are caring for their older parents or extremely worried about their older parents who are hospitalized and and basically you know going home to be with the lord pretty soon i mean we've got some, lots of people dealing with this um and then of course the death of a loved one this is this happens all the time people lose their children people lose their parents and basically any kind of change or transition not of your choosing and who doesn't experience this i know we do we've all experienced things that we didn't choose but how do you get through that and our guest is going to talk a lot about that tonight but a few more things i want to update you on we have been uh, experiencing five thousand people per day joining us for many of the prayer campaigns we've had and our Facebook Live audience has really increased to thousands and thousands of people a week. Um, I don't really have time to pay too much attention to that. I just know that it's been really great. This is a great way of reaching people, but also the Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Robert's been doing this now for, week, I think we figured, eight weeks. You started Holy Week. I started on, yeah, I started... Uh, and you did every single day of Holy Palm Week. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Okay, Palm Sunday. So this has been... Uh, I think I've done it eight weeks. Eight weeks now. I'll, I'll have and to check. he's. He doesn't have any plans to stop anytime soon, which is really good. Um, and it's been great for shut-ins and for people who either watch Robert before or after church or people that just don't go to church. Um, so we love this. So in order to um, access that, just be with us on Facebook Live, 8 a.m. any Sunday morning. That's California, <clears throat> excuse me, Pacific time. And again, 
please sign up for Robert Schuler Ministry, excuse me, Robert Schuler Inspiration.com. That is for a whole new uh, inspirational video series that will be released soon. And we know it will bless you, it will bless family members, it will bless many, many people that need this kind of help. Because going to church on Sunday morning is terrific and wonderful. There's some fantastic Bible teachers out there. There's some fantastic pastors that help people Sunday morning. But where do people go in the middle of the night when they're lonely and they need help and they're really dealing with something critical? This inspirational video series will be available to anyone, anytime. And that's what we're so happy about. And we feel like this has really been a strong calling from God. A um, couple more things. Our podcast is available on iTunes. Our podcast is also on robertschulerministries.podomatic.com. And last but certainly not least, pray, pray, pray for schulerhelp.org, another one of our initiatives through our Church with No Walls. This is a huge <clears throat> mission project. Uh, you need to keep those, that in your prayers. I don't know if you saw in the New York Times last week, but this has to do with the opioid epidemic that's killing thousands and thousands of people weekly and now people are actually getting these illegal drugs that have been made overseas and they're shipping them through the mail they're receiving them through the mail two two 13 year old children died last week by taking these illegal opioids and just taking one one each and they're gone they didn't even know what they were taking probably so there's a huge problem with addiction in this country so SchulerHelp.org is a place where you or anybody you know can go and there's contact information on there. We have somebody answering the phone and they will direct you and this person answering is just a wonderful man that knows what people need. He's a trained uh, intake counselor and he'll help you and he'll try everything in his power to get you an insurance policy and to get you in to treatment or anybody you know into treatment. So. Um, we receive touching email letters almost on a weekly basis. I mean, they're really touching, but they're also very disturbing about how many people need help and, and what they go through. People are hurting. Uh, Robert and I are ambassadors for Jesus, so we go wherever we are called, whenever. And so let us know if you need us. Reminder to push star um, after the interview or during the interview when we have time to um, ask questions. Take it away, Robert. You can introduce our guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to introduce him in just a second. I want okay. to say something about uh, the date today. Today is June 15th. And uh, this is the anniversary. I don't know what anniversary it is. I'll have to do my math. But it was June 15th, 2015. That one of the most important documents in history was signed by King John. King John was forced to sign this document. And as soon as I mentioned its name, many of you will know what I'm talking about. He was forced to sign the Magna Carta yes. of England. I thought you just said it was 2015. In 1215. Oh, 1215. Did I say yes, 2015? Yes, you did. So, that's why I was confused. Thank you. It was 1215. No, that's what I heard anyway. Thank 1215. you. 1215. So that was 800 mm -hmm. and uh, two years ago mm -hmm. uh, that that document was signed. And that document was, again, probably one of the most important documents in human history because it was a, one of the first times in history where the power of the king um, is, is put in and changed and transferred to the power of the people. It's because these, um, uh, these, uh, land, these landlords, you call them landlords, but they literally were lords because they owned the land or land barons uh, forced him to sign this. This isn't something he wanted to do. But uh, but he did it because he was forced to do it, and it put the power in the, in the hands of the people. And it was the foundation of what we know as freedom. It became a foundation for the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look at the so so many of the so many of the the things that are in that document correlate very similar to our Constitution, and it creates our, our the Western society as we know it. And if you look at Western society, and you look at uh, at at the way at the way um, um, democracy works in Western cultures, uh, it's based to a large degree on the foundation this 800-year history of dealing with the Magna Carta and creating different kinds of thoughts. 
For instance, uh, Otto Warmbier. Is that how you pronounce his name? Otto Warmbier? B-I-E-R? I don't know how to pronounce Beyer it. Beyer sounds right. Warmbier. Uh, he was just released from North Korea. Oh, uh, he had a... Um, he was in prison for a year and a half uh, in a coma. Uh, f- and what, it, what, did it, what, was his, what was his crime? He stole a poster. A poster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and that was his... And, and in the Western culture, we, it, it just goes against every grain of, of our humanity to give that kind of a punishment. Well, in the Magna Carta, Clause 20, it basically establishes that a trivial offense receives a a trivial or a small fine. Mm -hmm. A a serious offense, a longer fine, and it specifically goes on, but not the extent that it deprives him of his livelihood. Mm -hmm. And this this actually matches the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution, where the, 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 the punishment fits the crime. And again, this is kind of our Western culture coming out. And we look at this history today where we see this, this, what we see as complete lunacy because we've grown up this way. It's so ingrained into our culture that we can't comprehend how how another culture can accept this. And uh, the fact of the matter is it's because of the 800 years of forming and creating our culture. But... um, and and so even prior to that if you look at christian civilization and the christian and and and, and judeo christian um uh, ethics uh, fill this void as well and um so that brings us now to our guest who is a retired general robert f dees uh, i met him recently at a at a friend's wedding he landed up sitting right next to me and he informed me that we had met before um, someplace, but only briefly. So, you know, when you meet somebody in a, in a party, as you meet 100 people in one time, you don't necessarily remember them. And unfortunately, I didn't remember him, but I remember him now because we had a chance to sit and to talk and get acquainted. And I am so impressed with this man. I said, you've got to be my mm-hmm. guest uh, today. And he agreed and I believe he's on the line. But before we talk to him, I want to give you a little bit about a little bit more information about his background because it's it's extensive. Um, I don't have time, or we don't want to take the time to go through everything because I want to hear what he has to say. Uh, but at the same time, I want you to realize that you're you're talking to a man of of, of substance, of character, mm-hmm. uh, and um, and someone you want to listen to. He is Major General Retired Robert F. Bob Dees. He served for 31 years in the U.S. Army in a wide variety of command and staff positions, culminating in his last three assignments as Assistant Division Commander of Operations, 101st Airborne Division Commander, 2nd Infantry Division, United States Forces Korea, and a Deputy Commanding General uh, let me see, it would be V Corps, or is it, it's the Roman numeral five Corps in Europe, uh, concurrently serving as commander, U, concurrently serving as the commander, U.S.-Israeli Combined Task Force hmm. for Missile Defense, commissioned a second lieutenant after graduating from West Point in 1972, and uh, that was the same year I graduated from high school. <laughs> he is also a graduate of the Naval Postgraduate School on the U.S. Army Command and General uh, Staff College, the Industrial College of the Armed Forces, and Royal College of Defense Studies in London, England. Whew, if that's not a mouthful, following <laughs> his retirement in January 2003, he has served as Executive Director of Defense Strategies, Microsoft Corporation, followed by leadership of a nonprofit outreach to the military. Um, and the list goes on and on. He was, most recently, he served as National Security Advisor and Campaign Chairman for Carson for President in 2016. So he's had a very, very illustrious career, and we are very honored to be able to have him on this call. And the thing that, and you know, now it goes on and talks about all of the 
the programs he's been on and they and they just go on forever uh, because he is on if they need somebody to talk about national security mm-hmm. uh, they they know he's one of the go-to's that they can call and talk to um, and let me get to the most important part and that is he is married to Catholic to the former Kathleen Robinson of Houston Texas they have two children and seven grandchildren and currently reside in Round Rock Texas General and Mrs. Dees are grateful for the privilege of serving God, nation, and others during these times. And so uh, the reason I, I got so excited about talking with, with uh, General Dees and why I said I wanted him to, to be our guest is because we were talking about, you know, I was talking about the fact that we're doing this, uh, these, these videos on inspiration, Robert Schuller inspiration. And I said, and I mentioned post-traumatic stress. And with that, he immediately responded, we can turn post-traumatic stress into post-traumatic growth. And I'm going, wow, that is good. I like that. I said, will you be my guest and talk about how we can take our, our, our stresses in life, our post-traumatic stress, because you don't have to be in the military to suffer post-traumatic stress. You can talk about post-traumatic, you can have post-traumatic stress Mm -hmm. uh, after numerous circumstances and situations. Um, We could talk about Donna's hijacking and and how stressful that was and the the Mm -hmm. post-traumatic she had from that. And some of you are going, what? Yes, Donna was in a hijack. That's for another day. She was actually hijacked, exactly. So that's another day. um, So that's stressful. Um, It's... I had post-traumatic stress when I ripped my nearly ripped my finger off, and it was it was very shocking for me to put a ring back on the the second time. Post-traumatic stress is very real, uh, but thanks to the gifts that we have from God mm-hmm. and the proper instruction on how to use those gifts, we can turn the stress into growth. And here to tell us how is uh, my good friend, General Robert Dees. Welcome to the call. Welcome. Uh, Hello. 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 Is he on there? Yes. You know, it looks like, uh, Bob, I think you called in on the other number, but let me, I I can unmute you here. Hang on just a minute. Um, I think, hold on just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, I'm on my... All callers are muted. Yeah, and I unmuted you. Yeah, I see you up here, but you were supposed to be on the panel below. Uh, active speakers. Let's see. Maybe you are on there. Hello? Hello? Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I th- yeah, you definitely use the um, um, participant code versus the host code. I, I must have given you the wrong code, but I know you're there. I see you, and I just unmuted hey, you. Well, why, don't you, why don't you press star six on yeah, your phone? Yeah, that's a great idea. Push star six, please, and then you will be in the... Oh, this is a Q&A oh session he's there. You're there. I heard you. Oh, can you hear I, oh I can hear you now. <laughs> Hi. Okay, Uh, embrace your training, Donna. Oh, don't uh, worry. Good to be with you. Though. Don't worry. It's great to be with you. <laughs> so great hey, to be with you. Uh, well, uh, first, I want to appreciate Robert and Donna uh, for your outreach for many years and uh, the very relevant uh, things that you're tackling right now, the opioid epidemic mm-hmm. and so forth. So uh, may your tribe increase as you continue to do this, and it's just Thank an honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Robert, you. I thought your uh, reading of Psalm 20 was appropriate uh, you know wait for the Lord be strong take heart uh, mm-hmm. because the reality is that that's a great uh, psalm for soldiers mm-hmm. but we're all soldiers we're all warriors because uh, whether you're uh, in battle dress uniform on the battle front or if you're a, a mother of three in, in diapers uh, it, it, you're still a warrior or you're a businessman trying to keep people on payroll and so forth or as Donna alluded to earlier if you've had a health diagnosis or so forth uh, Mm -hmm. we're all warriors absolutely so that's a very fitting psalm Uh, that psalm refers 
to the day of trouble, and the scriptures refer to day of trouble a lot. And I think the reality is that we all, through our lives, have days of trouble. That's the truth. Joy and victory, but we, but we have days of trouble. And uh, in those days of trouble, I recall that Jesus said, "In the world, you will have tribulation." And uh, that is so true. We all have tribulation. And then he said, but take courage, I've overcome the world. So he is our rock, our fortress, our deliverer, and the strong tower to whom we can run. Uh, this subject of post-traumatic growth, and Robert, please inter- interrupt at any point in time, or Donna. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good at interrupting. I usually don't have to be told to interrupt, <laughs> but, uh, or give them permission. <laughs> good, <laughs> good. Good. Uh, Since you don't live in our, even in our state, we couldn't have you over to our um, little studio here, which is in our apartment. But we have all three of your books uh, up here uh, in front of the camera. Well, they're sort of in the background here, but uh, the Resilience Trilogy. So we have the Resilient Nations, the Resilient Warriors, and the Resilient Leaders sitting right here. And I just think that's amazing that you took this concept of post-traumatic growth 
and you developed it into these uh, this resilient uh, life cycle. And so, I don't know, we, we want to hear you talk a little bit about how you've laid this out and how is this relevant in our 21st century America. And just, you know, tell us a little bit more about how you came to write these books. Writing books is a lot of work, first of all. Robert's written quite a few, and I've, I've written three very small, little teeny books. But... I know it's a lot of work, and these things, unfortunately, they're over 400 pages. Yeah, long. and they're beautiful they're books. Yeah, they're and um, we actually had a chance to to glance through them. We've only had them a few days, and then I think you know we were we were out of town on business um, right away when we got them. In. But I just can't wait to delve into these. I have um, actually before you answer that, I want I just sort of was thumbing through the one on resilient warriors, and the forward is by Governor Mike Huckabee, and I came to this page here, page 145, and we're talking about God as the healer and you know having faith in the Lord. And, and of course, in Exodus, God tells Egypt, I am the Lord, I am your healer. And it's, I, I really enjoyed this one, this one paragraph here. Um, on the battle, you said, on the battlefield, when troops are wounded, they don't call for the general. They unashamedly call for the medic and the chaplain to help mend their wounds of the body and soul. Certainly God works through our many great medics, chaplains, physicians, mental health professionals, pastors, counselors, family and friends, but God is the ultimate healer. And in Psalm 147, 3, uh, reminds us that he, God, heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And then also in Psalm 34, 18 and 19, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Uh, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the, are the, uh, the are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. And this is what I love. We must continue to press into this healer God as the process of bouncing back extends from days to weeks to months. Failure to do this is a key reason trauma sufferers, including seemingly strong Christians, get stuck in recovery. And that was just like, whoa, I cannot wait to read this entire book. So true. So, anyways. Amen. Well, yes. that certainly is. Uh, well, I, Donna, in answer to your question, I first started uh, really passionately pursuing this subject of resilience when I saw the uh, military suicide dynamics mm. going up oh. the roof, uh, yeah. not only for our veterans with, yeah. you know, 22 right. veterans a day, but also at that point in time, there was like one active duty uh, military member uh, a day that was taking wow. their own life. And, wow. and, and so I was wrestling with that, and I was grieving okay. about that, mm -hmm. and uh, I also was a bit uh, uh, belabored by the, the military uh, doing great work on what happens in crisis when a person's getting ready to do something to harm themselves. There was a lot of research and work on that, but I felt like we needed to get much further upstream. Let's let's go upstream in a person's life and set the conditions, mm. give them the right reflexes so that when trauma happens, when the body slam occurs, whatever that might be, uh, they are more inclined. The Swiss the, uh, theologian Paul Tournier said, we fall the way we lean. Oh, yes. And so the point is for us, ahead of time, sort of like pre-traumatic growth, ahead of time to prepare and have the right reflexes so that when we fall, we fall in the right direction into the arms of God. That's and as I wrestled with those suicide dynamics uh, and this post-traumatic growth concept, I came up with something called the resilience life cycle. And in, in, in basic terms, it's uh, how do we prepare for the storms of life? That's the before phase. Uh, obviously putting on the armor of God, but there's a lot of specific techniques I recommend in terms of preparation, ounce of prevention, where the become cure. And then how, uh, when the storm hits, whatever that happens to be, how do we hide under the shelter of God's wings until the destruction passes by? And I call those actions on contact, and those are specific steps that we can discuss later if you would like. Specific steps to take that allow us to most effectively respond to the trauma in our lives. And then after the fact, which is the hardest part of the journey, not getting stuck in grief, right. as you express, right. uh, how, how do we do two things? How do we look through the rearview mirror and uh, process the experience properly to include 
include grieving well. Right. And then how do we look forward through the windshield, learn to sing a new song, uh, learn to comfort others, uh, and then achieve a position of forgiveness and gratitude and move forward. And then this whole resilience life cycle, it, it doubles back as a cycle because uh, guess what? Hurricane season comes around again and again. Yes, it does. And, uh, Every year, you know, right? We, we need to be careful. You know, Mm-hmm. You know, get ready for the next one, you know, just like you would if you lived on the Gulf Coast of, uh, of Texas or wherever. Mm-hmm. A story that I think illustrates this aptly is uh, Robert Preston Taylor was a chaplain. He went to the Philippines uh, in 1941, not a good year in the Pacific, and he soon mm-hmm. found himself on the Bataan Death March. 56,000 wow. allied soldiers uh, and many, if they would stumble and fall, they would get bayoneted. And only half of those uh, those uh, uh, captives made it to the prison camp. So when they got to the prisoner of war camp, Robert Preston Taylor had been the chaplain's chaplain. He was helping people and ministering and just uh, a word in season. Uh, and he discovered that the local guerrillas operating around this prison camp had medical supplies, and some of his prisoners were getting life-threatening cuts and uh, jungle infections of various things and he started sneaking out uh, getting this medicine for his fellow prisoners. One night he was caught coming back in, thrown in the hell box, uh, a deep pit uh, with just uh, raindrops coming in now and then, bamboo over the top. And then finally they pulled him out of this. His fellow prisoners, one under both arms, they pulled him out. And you can identify with this as is typical of a chaplain or a caregiver. He'd been in the hell box for over two weeks. He was emaciated. They pulled him out, no food. They pulled him out, and they looked at him. They said, Chaplain, what's the good word? Wow. <laughs> just like, you know, that, wow. What's the good word, Chaplain, or Pastor, or Reverend, or Caregiver, Doctor? And, and he said, Men, uh, do not doubt in the dark what you believe in the light. Oh. And, and that is so critical. Uh. Figure out in the light of day when, uh. when the sun is shining what you really believe, yeah. how you would really respond, uh, what your true values are, who your real friends are, uh, what is your equipment so that you can deal with trauma, use to deal with trauma. Figure all that out in the light of day. Uh, be intentional about it so that when the dark storm clouds roll across, you know what to do. You have the right reflexes. That is so amazing. Maybe that answers yes. your question a bit yes. there, Donna. Oh, it's amazing. Can we take some questions now? Is that, it seems like it, it might be a good time to of take Of course. Us. Okay, good. Um, so in order to, Robert's holding up the phone number again in case there's anybody on Facebook Live that wants to join us. And, you know, otherwise, the, for those of you that are already on the call, please feel free to answer to ask any questions or if there's a specific prayer request. You know, we're, we're a little telephone church service here, so we take prayer requests well, too. But well, as earlier I went up to look at the, make sure we were still recording yes. something again turned off. Yeah, we don't know because uh, you never know with Facebook yeah, because, and cell phones. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I had to turn it around so that we're, we can't read oh, okay. what's going on there, but somebody had asked for prayer he says he needs prayer really bad. I just happened oh, to have seen wow. that when I went up there. His really? name is John Sewing, S-E-W-I-N-G. So I'm assuming that's how he pronounces his name, Sewing. Well, maybe we should pray for John right and now. Th- Let's just pray for John right now. What do you, what Absolutely. Do you, what Dear do you Heavenly about? Father, yes. we thank you for mm-hmm. this opportunity that we have to be able to gather together uh, literally around the world yes. because I know we have people from South Africa. We always do. I know mm-hmm. we have people from Mexico. We always do literally around the world and we are gathered together creating this this force of prayer yes Lord. which has the power to move mountains mm-hmm. and so oh god we do not know what is the mountain and the and the obstacle and the challenge that john is facing right now but you do mm-hmm. and so answer his prayer O oh lord Give him the strength he needs to do the work that's required to succeed. So be with him, empower him, strengthen him, and go with him always, we pray. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. So, um, 
I we don't have any questions. This is not this is not atypical. People are shy and people are afraid to ask questions. It's quite interesting. And you're probably intimidating because you're a general. I need to tell everybody he's the nicest man in the entire world. He is so nice, non intimidating. <laughs> And a great guy. So if you have anything you want to share with him, if you have anything you want to ask him about as far as maybe your healing goes, um, if you don't want to share it publicly and we do not call you out, you just if you ask a question anonymously, we keep it anonymous unless you... Uh, of course, I can't see most of the numbers on here anyway. They mostly say anonymous. But if you would like... Um, if you would like prayer or if you would like direction uh, please feel free to push the star in the six right now or you can always personal message us afterwards you can email us and it's uh, robert at schulerministries.org or donna at schulerministries.org and if there's something else you might want to to ask to uh, of the general d's uh, bob then um, if you write that to us we will get it to him and he can get back to you so um, Robert, you probably have some questions. Yeah. So I know what you is, do. So, you know, I you have these fabulous quotes that I've written down. Uh, all, I've written three of them down. Um, and, um, you know, I go, you know, when you, when you face, when you face um, post-traumatic stress, uh, most of the people who, have you were mentioning don't have a faith because they didn't didn't practice it before they went in. Mm -hmm. They come out and they have this stressful situation because they didn't have the opportunities to know which way to lean, and uh, so they have fallen in the wrong direction. How do how do how do we pick them up them up or how do they pick themselves up uh, in order to experience growth? Uh, after the fact. Right. Well, it's a good question, Robert. I, I, I think uh, one principle I would highlight is uh, to guard your primary relationships. One of the ironies of the human condition is that we oftentimes attack the ones we mm. love the most. Maybe we feel more secure with them. But uh, between husband and wife, between close friends, you know, uh, faith, family, and friends are really the way you navigate through something like this. And so you need to be careful you don't drive away your close closest of friends, who I call 911 friends, mm -hmm. or your closest family members at the very point in time when you need them the most. Uh, that's, uh, that's a tendency. I, I know I went through a, a rough patch uh, a, a while back, and, and when that was happening, uh, I you know, uh, an example, for instance, is that uh, my wife and I lost our first child. Mm. And when we lost our first child, we uh, mm. we were clinging to each other, but we weren't as cognizant as we should or could have been about our close family that wanted also to embrace us and wrap arms around us. And uh, we, we weren't uh, as accepting of their help as supportive as a young couple uh, as we should have been. And I know everybody experiences that. It's a human tendency, but we need to fight that tendency. Yes. And then another thing, I, I alluded to bitterness earlier. Yes. Bitterness uh, is just a, can, a cancer, mm -hmm. and it eats us up from the inside and the outside. Kathleen and I were in London. We met a wonderful lady, about 60 years old. We went to the BE celebrations with her uh, at the 50th anniversary of Victory Europe. Wow. And uh, she said, would you like to meet my sister, who's one year uh, older? And we went to the flat in London. The sister answered the door, and we thought it was maybe the mother or the grandmother that was answering the door. Wow. We knew there was a story, and, and when we heard the story over dinner, these two young ladies at age 16 and 17 had been the daughters of a British naval attaché who had been unable to get his family out of Hong Kong before the Japanese invaded in 1941. Wow. And these two young gir er, girls spent uh, two and a half years in prison camp by the Japanese. Wow. Uh, the, the Japanese, for instance, raped over 10,000 civilians in that province in the first month of their occupation. So you can only imagine what befell these young ladies, and yet one, uh, 50 years mm -hmm. later, was lovely, vivacious, optimistic, spring in her step. The other one was gnarled, and you could tell that this cancer of bitterness had eaten her from the inside out and the outside in. 
And, and so I never have I seen such a clinical study, if you will, of the, the different bookends uh, that, uh, you know, and one proved to be resilient, one proved to be, uh, you know, she was body slammed and she stayed on the ground, uh, wow. you know, for her whole life. And uh, I think, uh, you know, you say, well, how do you fight that? Well, one way you fight this bitterness is just the spirit of gratitude. <laughs> uh, people I've talked to, whether their their sons have committed, uh, have killed themselves, or whether they've been wounded in war, or whatever their life trauma is, health issues, they find that, particularly if they're a person of faith, but even if they're not, uh, this notion of being able to be grateful for something, for the, the day, or the flower, or the whatever, uh, and then ultimately for the Lord and His goodness to us, that gratitude is the best antidote there is to the bitterness, but it has to Amen. be practiced over time. And if, again, if you've made it reflexive in your life, then it's that much easier to return to that even under trauma. That is so true. I know I had an assignment uh, with one of the programs um, I took when I went back to school in my mid-30s. Um, it was in human services, and we had a professor that made us, as an assignment, um, write a gratitude list and he said you start with anything and everything you start with the obvious you know in your family you start you but he wanted us to list everything he said and when I drop that paper on the ground it better have some weight to it and he said list everything go through your closet um, you know talk about the trees on your drive to work talk about the flat talk about everything I want to see pages and pages of gratitude uh, you know memories or gratitude things that you're thankful for on paper and we had to do that and turn it in and you know it really was meaningful and I've challenged people in my own uh, practice you know I have a little um, nutrition practice I call it the nutrition of the body mind and soul and I love what you said earlier in the call about how you know you have to be careful of what you put in your soul and your mind and your emotions and you need good nutrition in order to heal and to go on and be resilient so I can totally relate to that and the whole idea of being grateful and appreciating what you do have because you always have something left no matter what you've lost there's always something um i would like exactly to it, it sort of reminds us of the uh, story of Corey Tim Boom who was yes. grateful for the <laughs> yes. best bed bugs in the prison camp you know yeah. kept the guard away yes exactly yeah, I, was thinking, was, I was thinking right. of her too yeah, well, she was it, it, I, I have in a thing. psychological sense, it's often called reframing. You know, reframing, you can exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. exactly. I had the privilege and the honor of being able to sit at her feet and listen to her teach. Cause she lived nearby when I was in seminary, and I spent oh, and uh, had a lot of good times with her. But I just want to thank you right now for uh, being our guest today, and for your contributions and for everything you've shared, and. Um, uh, and we've held this up. We've held the card up for how people can acquire this Resilience Trilogy. And it's www.resiliencetrilogy.com. I'm holding the card up again. So down at the bottom is where Down you at the see. bottom. Yes, you can hold it. Your, your arm's longer yep. and you're closer to the camera. Yeah, my arms are huh? so long, I don't need a selfie stick. <laughs> he doesn't. His arms are selfie yeah. sticks. Um, this, is a, this, is a, <laughs> this is a church service, so we do uh, collect an offering. It might sound odd, but we don't pass a plate. But there are people that support our church with no walls. And we have so many people to thank for their continued gifts to our ministry. Um, you help keep us distributing hope and healing around the globe. And also let us know if you want any tickets to heaven. We pass out these tickets to heaven. And they're great little tools for evangelizing, sharing the love of Jesus with people. Of course, you don't need a ticket to get to heaven. But this is a wonderful tool that you can pass out to your children, your grandchildren, and it's a real good icebreaker, and it's something that um, I've people got a, just I've got to people step just in love. And tell a story. Oh sure. Yeah, uh, <coughs> we, were, we went up to uh, up north. We had it, anyhow. We took an Uber, and the Uber driver, uh, the well. Uber driver, as we're driving, all of a sudden uh, he says, he I said. Uh, I can't remember how the subject came up. I think, I think Donna may have asked him, "Are you Muslim?" Because he came from That's right. from Iran. He he was I Persian. Yeah. And he goes, "I used to be. Uh huh. But now I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. 
Uh-huh. I love Jesus. Uh-huh. I just absolutely love yeah, Jesus. He said it over I and think over. He said and over. that ten times. He did. I love Jesus. He almost I stopped the car as we were approaching the terminal, and Robert and I both got tears in our eyes. It was uh, the I most did. beautiful thing. And uh, and we gave Robert gave him this is so all, yeah. so <laughs> so when I left I gave him a stack of uh, tickets to heaven just didn't say a thing about it just handed it to mm-hmm. him and he totally gets it He'll, yeah exactly and, and, and we've given wonderful. out nearly a million of these and we're going to keep doing it so some of your offerings go towards reprinting and and repurchasing those uh, for more information on any of this you can go to our website robertschulerministries.org. And if you'd like to give a monetary gift, please go to robertschulerministries.org and click on the donate button, which can be found on the right side of the home page. Or if you like traditional mail, some people do that. We actually get uh, you know a number of uh, donations through the mail. And you can send those to Robert Schuler Ministries and our address is 2128 Bay Point Drive. And Bay Point is one word, B-A-Y-P-O-I-N-T-E. 2128 Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. And we have local, regional, and international projects that we support. Also, please email us or write to us with your prayer requests. We love praying for people. We believe in the power of prayer. Through prayer, we have seen miracles in our own family, Uh, You know, really, if you open your eyes, it's about being grateful again. You can see miracles in your own life every single day through prayer. So, again, your um, your donations are tax deductible. If you have any questions, our emails are robert at robertschulerministries.org or you can just do robert at schulerministries.org or donna at schulerministries.org. And, yeah, so... That's it for the offering. Oh, Robert's got... So this is so fun having Facebook. We're putting up the um, the address here in, in the Make camera. Sure fingers on the oh, yeah, there don't you put go. your fingers in there. So that's our address. Yeah, 2128 Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. I can't believe so, this hour has gone so fast. We, well, that's what happens when you have a great, fabulous, yes. wonderful <laughs> guest. I'm telling you, it's been a pleasure yeah, to have you. It was you. great fun to join you. It's great fun to join y'all, Robert. Dunn. Thank you so much, and please tell Kathleen hello, and tell her we really like our my pillows. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's, That's a story for another time. Mike Bell, he likes those my pillows. You... Yeah, I do. We <laughs> want to get him on as a guest, so we'll talk about that later. He'll be fun. Oh, that'll um, be fun. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, anyway, make sure you join us next month, and. Um, uh, uh, what day will it be again? Oh gosh, it'll be July fifteenth jo- at six right. p.m. Pacific. That's right. <laughs> so you can invite others. Uh, if you're on Facebook, um, you know, repost this and and uh, so everyone on your on your on your pages can join us and tell your friends because everyone would need some mid month inspiration and if they want to learn more about themselves, others, and God, this is the place to do it. And it's on the 15th of every month. Uh, we pray together and we'll discuss different subjects. And uh, do we know who our guest is going to be next? We do not know point? because we are doing this. Um, That's we'll be out right. of town. I don't think we're going to be able to have we'll, a guest. I don't think so. We'll be on Lake Powell and we're going to have to find a little studio or a quiet place to have this call on the 15th. But we'll be here. We'll be doing it. So make sure you join us, everybody. And, you know, tell others because everybody needs mid-month encouragement. Uh, We want to thank you for participating in this call once again. And please join us on the 15th of every month, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Please continue to email us with your questions, your ideas for future guests, anything you have on your heart and on your mind. And we will be posting this. I will either post it tonight or early tomorrow morning. Hopefully tonight. It's not that big a deal to post it. Um, The call goes on our podcast at robertschulerministries.com podomatic.com and it will be posted by tonight at the latest tomorrow morning and again it's available on iTunes it's just Robert Schuler Ministries so um, it can also be found on our website uh, any of these reminders robertschulerministries.org so until next time God is blessing you always and through all things Amen. and uh, goodbye God bless you bye bye Your conference recording has stopped.